Sega Saturn has three 32-bit processors. Hey, guys, th that's our flight. We've got to go. Three processors mean better gameplay. Come on, you guys, everyone's on board. Sony PlayStation only has one. If you won't fly the plane, then I'll find someone who will. Sega Saturn, now only $249 for unlimited action and the coolest games. Do you hear me? When you've got Sega Saturn, nothing else matters. Sega! Okay, before I start today's Retro Bat and Sega Saturn Kronos Retro Arch setup guide, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss out on upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new guide, plus it helps my channel out. So I did a live stream last night and I had somebody asking me about, in specific, the Retro Arch Libretro Kronos Core inside a Retro Bat. Uh, they're complaining that it's running it mm, three or four times the speed. So this is down to modern day refresh rates, that type of thing. So I'm going to show you how to actually resolve that issue specifically using that RetroArch Chronos Core. So first of all, to set Chronos up, what we're going to do is go to the RetroBat shortcut, right click on it, open file location. And from here, we're going to go down to the BIOS folder. Now, normally, with most of your BIOS files, they'll go loosely inside of here, but this one in particular needs to go into the Kronos folder. Here's Kronos, and the BIOS file we need for this is this one here. This is Saturn underscore BIOS dot bin. Now, we got several different BIOS files that's required inside of RetroBat for different emulators that support Sega Saturn, but in specific, this is literally the only one you need for Kronos. So if we come out of here and go to ROMs, what we're going to do next is drag in the very awesome Rail Shooter Area 51, which I remember when this one came out and I played it on PlayStation 1, and I've got a copy of this today on Sega Saturn. Uh, debatable whether the PS1 or Saturn version is superior, I'm not sure. So anyways, we're going to look for Saturn, go into Saturn, and here's Area 51. Now you'll notice this is in .chd file extension. I've used a converter to convert this to .chd from .bin.q. Uh, this is going to save us space. I'll leave the link in my description so you can actually convert your .bin and .qs to .chd. Like I said, very good stuff, especially if you're suffering from a lack of space on your hard drive. So anyways, we've got everything in place, and what we're going to do next then is actually open up RetroBat. Okay, so we're inside of RetroBat, and what we're going to do next is actually look for Sega Saturn, which is just here. Uh, obviously, we need some artwork for this to begin with, so just press Start, Main Menu, and go down to Scraper. And under scraper settings, I'm going to just make sure uh, Box 3D is enabled and everything else is enabled just there, including a preview video. And if I just go to scrape now. And scrape and finish, so let's go up to game settings, update game list, and yes. Cool, and here is Area 51, height of the UFO conspiracy theory thing like the X-Files was on TV at the time. So what we're going to do first is just make sure under View Options, I press Select button, Advanced System Options, Emulator, the first option which RetroBat is going to use is Kronos, as we can see here. Remember, uh, by leaving this to Auto, RetroBat is going to select the next option down. So let's just go to Libretto Kronos, and let's actually run this at default. So like I say, we got various different ways of emulating Sega Saturn games, but Kronos in particular only requires that one single BIOS file. So if you get a little window like this, don't take any notice of it. It's going to boot anyways. Just press yes. And as we can see here, it's running at a ridiculous fast speed. Unplayable most.
So if we just exit out of the game, uh, what we need to do here is open up view options again by pressing select button on your controller, advanced system options, and from here, if I just scroll down to screen sync, right at the bottom, we're going to find G sync, free sync compatibility. If we go in there, if we just press yes on this one and we go back into the game again. Now, just a little tip, but if you press spacebar when we're using RetroWatch Course, you can actually fast forward things. But as you can see, this is running at the correct frame rate now. And of course, we also got video settings to apply with Kronos. So let's just go back to advanced system options. What we're going to do first is take away decorations. So if we go to none and we're going to go to shader set. And what I'm going to do with this one is put this on to enhanced. Under game aspect ratio, I'm going to put this one on to full. Integer scaling, I'm going to turn this on. That's going to make the games look a little bit more blurry, so not pixelated. Internal resolution, I'm going to bump this one up to 1080p. Now, some games are going to lag, even if you've got a good high-end computer, if you pop this on to 4K or even 8K. So just remember that even boosting this to 720p or 1080p is most definitely better visually than the native resolution I'm not actually going to attempt to play the game just here, but as you can see, uh, visuals have changed now. We're still pixelated, but that's life and that's the 32-bit era for you here in 2024. And that's it for today's Retro Bat in RetroArch Chronos setup, guys. So, like I say, it's literally just a case of enabling the G-Sync button, which is going to make the game display at the correct speed rather than it being three to four times the speed of how it was originally intended so anyways if you like today's video hit notifications subscribe and like and also join me on social media i'm on facebook instagram twitter and tiktok but until next time stay retro